Good afternoon, everyone. We are here with Access Atlanta, ATL. I'm Rosalind Bentley with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and we're here at Lovely Karis Books in Little Five Points in Atlanta, and today we have a really special segment for you. We are here with Atlanta native, Spelman graduate, and novelist, Tayari Jones, and she is going to be talking to us today about her latest book, An American Marriage. And, you know, there has been a lot going on with this book, so you're going to want to stay tuned to speak with her and maybe ask her a few questions. So, Tayari. Yes, ma'am. You are here. It has been quite a whirlwind week for you. I mean, the book dropped. You started your book tour. The book has been getting strong reviews. And then maybe a couple other little things have happened <laughs> with the book. So I don't know if all of you know, but in case you didn't and you've been hiding somewhere, Tayori's book has just been selected as Oprah Winfrey's book club's latest selection. And the book has now been optioned for film by Oprah Winfrey. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, we want to talk a bit with Tayori about her book how it came to be, and how happy she is to be home because she loves Atlanta. I so. do. I love Atlanta. <laughs> All right. So, Tayari, again, welcome. Thank you for joining us. So, talk to me just a little bit about the process of writing this book. I understand that kind of started a little in Lenox Mall. Well, this An American Marriage is a novel about a young couple. They've only been married 18 months. You know, as she says, I was a newlywed. I was still combing the rice from my hair. And her husband is arrested and convicted and incarcerated for a crime he did not commit. Like that's, that's the premise of the novel. And I did come to this when I was in Lenox Mall and I overheard a young couple arguing. They were clearly in love and in trouble. And I overheard her say, Roy, you know you wouldn't have waited on me for seven years. And I was really intrigued by this. You know, where was he? What had happened for seven years? And he says, I don't know what you're talking about. This wouldn't have happened to you in the first place. And I was just really, my imagination just took off from there. And it was from there that I built this novel. All right. And so the, the novel deals quite a bit with a young, fragile marriage, but it also deals with the impact of mass incarceration on black couples, on black families, and particularly on African American men. So can you talk about that passion of wanting to fuse the two together? You know, I don't, people sometimes say, oh, I think it's interesting that you did a love story and involved the question of prison and incarceration, but really, it's not a hard pairing because every person in prison is somebody's son, somebody's, somebody's husband, somebody's lover. Everyone is somebody something. So it wasn't a leap to put the things together. I think it's just really, it's just really natural. And they have this young, fragile marriage. And I feel like a lot of people have fragile marriages. I don't think this means that this marriage should not survive. I mean, it's a lot to say that your marriage is only real if it can survive prison. Like that is like a crazy burden to put, a crazy standard to put, like your marriage should have the space to grow and survive even if you're not perfect. But to face prison, so much to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you said, these are imperfect people. You know, um, you find yourself, I've, in reading the book, you find yourself rooting for various characters throughout, being angry with some of the characters throughout. So can you talk to, about, to me about, and to our viewers, and just in case you're just joining us, we're here at Karis Books in Atlanta, Georgia, with novelist Tayari Jones. So can you talk to me just a bit about building those characters? And at a previous conversation we had, you said that you kind of felt like this might be a little bit more Roy's novel in some ways. Well, I didn't start off with the idea for it to be Roy's novel. I was really interested more in his wife. I was, because when I write about an issue, I like to write what I like to call adjacent to the issue. So I was interested in how the fact of mass incarceration, I like to make it smaller instead of thinking of even as a mass incarceration, this one particular incarceration, how this one particular incarceration affected the wife 
in this, the young wife. I was really interested in her, but then I decided that the story really didn't feel, I felt like it was a little too to the left of the issue, that it wasn't really complete until I also told his story. And so I toggled their points of view back and forth. Mm -hmm. And as always in a lot of your novels, I mean, your first novel was Leaving Atlanta. That was based on the Atlanta child murders and um, it's set very grounded here in Atlanta. Uh, we also saw that with Silver Sparrow, her third novel, and now this. Can you talk a little bit about Atlanta as a character in the novel or a grounding for the novel? Well, you know, I was born here. I was I was born downtown Atlanta, and I went to college at Spelman College. I went to Mays High School. So Atlanta is my home. It's my it's who I am. It's how I understand myself to be. So it's really for me quite natural that I set my novels in Atlanta. But I'm also interested in Southwest Atlanta and looking, I think that the South in general and Atlanta in particular has really been kind of misrepresent, misrepresented on the national stage. In what way? I feel that now that we, the more kind of outrageous among us, Okay. have become the landmarks of what Atlanta is. And I was kind of interested in talking about, you know, everyday people, they go to work, they go home, they try to build their families, they're not on TV. Mm -hmm. And I was just really interested in looking at us, this is an American marriage, and I'm, so I'm looking at Atlanta as a distinctly American city. I'm looking at Celestial and Roy as an American couple mm -hmm. and their challenges as American. Kind of writing about the South in the way that we are distinct but also normalizing it. Like so many people think of the South as a freak show, mm. you know, mm -hmm. doing every, like I said, people doing outrageous things. And we, while we can be outrageous, but we also are everyday people. We are, you know, we are, are each one another's boy and girl next door as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and you mentioned this, this notion of this being an American marriage. Can you talk to me a little bit about the selection of the title of your book? Well, you know, when I was looking for a title, I was brainstorming and I just, you know, when they say you're brainstorming, they're like, no judgment. We're just brainstorming here. Just say whatever comes to mind. Don't hold back. So I said, what about an American marriage? Just as a starting point. I said, I like the word American. And I was even joking with them. I was like, oh, I have a cat. She's writing a memoir. It's called American Feline. It's going to be great. <laughs> and so this was like our little joke. But they mm -hmm. were all, the people at the publishing house were all like, we like it. And I was like, no, 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 no. We said we were brainstorming. This is a mm -hmm. storm. Mm -hmm. But they kept pushing back on it. They wanted it. They wanted it. And I felt uncomfortable with it. I said, you know, I feel oh. like. I feel like an American marriage sounds like a novel about some people in Connecticut having some emotions, you know? <laughs> Maybe they're getting a divorce. Maybe mm -hmm. they can't decide whether they're going to send their kids to mm -hmm. private school. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But my editor pointed out, he said, Connecticut is a very tiny state. Mm -hmm. Why is it that this tiny state in your mind seems mm -hmm. more American than your characters here in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. There are more people in the city of Atlanta than the whole state of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So why would this little slice be representative and not your characters? There's also, though, the very strong element of family in this book. As well as we get to know the three characters in the triangle, we also get to know their families. And for many of us, we can recognize relatives in them. So can you talk about build the importance of building out that family dynamic in this? Well, I've always liked, all my novels, I've always liked writing about families. But I had fun, all these three characters, they have such quirky parents. Celestial's father is like a mad scientist, inventor guy. Um, Roy's father, he's kind of a salt of the earth. And his whole thing is that he um, married Roy's mother when Roy was a baby and he made him his junior. He says, I'll make you my junior, gave his name. And that's like the gift, that's what he has to give, is not just give him his last name, but to give him his first name too. And then Andre's father, so vain, his <laughs> handsome, mm -hmm. vain father. Mm -hmm. And they're all trying to decide, as Roy says, how they're going to get the recipe right for the next generation. They admire their fa they admire their parents in the previous generation, but each of them is eager to try and have a new blueprint for living. Mm -hmm.